nothing wrong with the acceleration on this. Good day, YouTube viewer. Today I'm going to be a YouTube reviewer, and I'm out on the Z900 RS today. Let's take a quick look at the motorbike before I fire her up and start to ride. In fact, I probably should fire it up so you can have a listen to it um, while it's sitting here parked, just idling. So I've just ridden here, so it is warmed up a bit, um, so it won't start with higher revs like it does sometimes. Okay. Now let's have a look at this machine. If this is not the best retro on the market, I don't know what is. I think this is the best looking bike I have seen in decades and I'll explain why I think that in a minute for you but how good does that look? The LED headlight, the LED indicators but the LED headlight looking retro in itself with that round style. The horn underneath, good size tyres, we'll talk about those a little bit later. And look at it spark, look at it shine, look at it um, ping, it's probably the word I'm looking, up, looking for, look at it ping. It just pops this bike in the terms of colour. There's a reason I wanted it in this colour, and we'll talk about that as well. Uh, you've got your four into one exhaust, looks really, really good. Uh, raised logos there with the Kawasaki, and also the Z900 RS, very authentic to the original. Uh, the seat is a traditional, what I remember as a traditional style seat, from whatever angle you look at it, that um, yellow and green, or it's a bit like Australian sporting colours I guess, green and gold, um, looks really really good. A lot of people uh, when these first come, came out loved that Jaffa colour and tried to snap that one up. I waited for this colour and I'll talk about that in a little while. So I've had the uh, handrail fitted, the grab rail, that's what I'm looking for, the grab rail fitted which is really good for when you're lugging it around, makes it easy. It's just a beautiful looking machine and I would have to classify this as a dream bike so we're going to talk about that in a minute. Alrighty, let's hop on it and go for a ride. The Z900 RS. Is this the best retro on the market? Certainly the best looking in my book. And in terms of performance, it's fantastic as well. Alright, let's go for a ride. So we're going to do a few things today. Uh, including a little bit of town riding, some mountain twisty road riding, a little bit of highway riding, a little bit of lane riding. So we're going to do a little bit of everything and I'm going to start by telling a story, but we'll get going first. What a beautiful day. Looks like sailing boats are about to get out. Nice tight turning circle. Very good. here onto the road. Avoid the potholes. Alright, let's start this video by telling a little story. A true story. And it takes us back to my childhood. And I remember being very young and seeing the very first model Honda CB750 uh, 754 come out onto the market and seeing people ride that bike, not so much when the bike came on the market, but seeing people riding that bike around a classic bike, regarded as a classic bike, still to this day. Fantastic machine. And then also being a very young child at school and seeing what I thought were very cool people at the time, they are probably in their early mid-twenties riding around on the Z1s when they came out. So they came out in 1972, the first one, the Jaffa colour being the first. And they were probably a few years old when I saw them riding around, but at this time I just fell in love with those machines. And so for that reason, this to me is my dream bike from my very young childhood. 
I would see this riding around in the streets, listen to that beautiful four-cylinder sound and just dream of one day being able to ride such a machine. It was the trendiest machine I could think of. More than any other car or any other vehicle, I just thought it was fantastic looking and sounding machine and those guys were so cool that rode those bikes. And so I always dreamed of owning one. But many years later when I got my license, in Australia you have to start your license in those days and uh, the maximum power you were allowed to have, maximum size engine, was a 250cc engine. And in my early years of riding, that restricted me the first three years to a 250cc machine. My first two bikes when I was riding on the road legally were a Suzuki TS185, which in those days was a trail bike, called a trail bike, be called an enduro or more appropriately probably a dual sport today. And the other one was a CB250, a Honda CB250. Again inspired a little bit I guess by my fascination with the CB754 which really changed motorcycling and globally at that time when it came out. I think that was 1968-69 by memory. I don't remember that, but uh, the specific year, but um, having looked at that bike a lot over the years and YouTube videos about it and seen them at bike shows and things like that, I do know that the year was about 68, 69. It was revolutionary. And then the next revolutionary bike that came along was the Z1. So the ones I saw riding around the streets uh, that I blustered over from the schoolyard were the green and gold or the green and yellow and so when this bike came out when Kawasaki brought out the retro version the retro the Z1 inspired retro that harks back to that magnificent machine I, my goal was to get the green and gold, the green and yellow one. So I waited 18 months until I could get my hands on one. And then I waited till I walked into my local dealer and actu he actually had one in stock. And it often happens with me when I go into a dealer and I see the bike that I like, or see any bike that I really like, I find it nearly impossible not to buy it. And so I wasted no time saying, yes, that's mine. I'll get you the deposit straight away. And three days later, I was riding that machine. It was all registered and everything else. So that's a little town riding. We'll come back and do some more town riding in a little while, just so you can see how the motorcycle performs. And I got to say, Kawasaki, did such an incredible job on this machine. It really does look the part. It's a modern take on the Z1. And they were very good in the way they did it in that they, I mean, it's it's probably a bigger and heavier machine. It's not as light as the original. The tires are much bigger and things like that. But they've developed the machine that looks the part. It certainly, has, you can see very clearly that inspiration and I'll talk about how others see it when you're out riding this bike but they put on all the modern technologies without going too far so you do have traction control and ABS but you don't have rider modes and things like that and I think that is fantastic for this bike I think they've just done enough technology to make it really safe and perform like a modern machine but they haven't gone overboard and put so much technology on it that it doesn't feel like a older inspired machine. It reminds me so much of the early road bikes I rode just in terms of the sitting position 
where you sit on the bike, you sit on the bike, not in the bike. Uh, the handlebars, the seat, it all feels like those road bikes I rode in my early years of uh, having a license. And of course, when you first start out, you don't have a lot of money or anything, so... Uh, so I couldn't afford to even get a second-hand Z1 in the, in the beginning, but I always dreamt of having one. And a couple of years ago, that dream came true. And this really is my dream bike. When I walk into the garage, I look at this and it just puts a smile on my face and makes me feel good. So well done Kawasaki, you've done an incredible job. Now the other bikes from that era that really inspired me, I haven't seen a really great retro version of them. If I ever do, then I'd be very tempted. Like if they bought out a retro CB750, that looked a lot like the original, I would be very tempted to buy that as well. All right, so we've done a little bit of town. We're gonna to go around a big sweeping corner and do some mountain road now, some twisties. There's a bit of road work going up, on, up here, so we will have to stop. Now, in terms of that look, this motorcycle turns more heads than any other I've ever ridden. For example, the other day I did a ride up Macquarie Pass. And at the top I went to Robertson and I filled up with fuel at the petrol station. And this um, young lady in the next bay filling up her car, finished filling up, went and paid, and I was just uh, finishing fueling up myself when she came out. And she said, that is a beautiful looking motorcycle. I just said, thank you. So she would have been about 25, something like that. I didn't get the impression she knew lots about motorcycles, but she just thought it was a fantastic looking machine. Another example is I, and this happens quite regularly, every time I fuel up or I go to a petrol station, someone will come up and ask me about the, the motorbike. They'll ask me about the Z900 RS and they'll say, oh, how old is that? How long did it take you to restore it? Is that a new bike or is that an old bike? I get so much of that. And a lot of people are not sure. So you get people my age who just go up, come up, uh, if they know about the Z900 RS and they know the story and they'll just talk about how good it looks. I haven't seen one in the flesh before and they just uh, want to have a check it out and I'm more than happy to let them do that. And, they, uh, and then they start talking about how they used to have one or how they owned one or how they bought an old one and it's in their garage, they're still waiting to restore it. So you get a lot of that going on. But a lot of people do think who don't know about the Z900 RS but do remember the old Z1 think it's a restored machine. So that's a nod to Kawasaki on how well they did in making a new bike to look like an old one. And I remember by the time I could afford a large capacity machine like a leader, leader bike, bikes like the Z1 weren't around anymore. Oh, I love the way the sun is coming through that uh, through those trees. I'm on some twisties here so these are my favorite kinds of roads to do on this bike. I'll talk about why shortly as well. I lost my train of thought there. Yes, that's right. Yeah, a lot of motorcycles weren't... What I found when I could afford to buy this style of bike, and I should have bought a second-hand one at the time and got a second-hand Z1 and kept it and looked after it and now it would be worth a lot of money. But the bikes are available, you sat more in them, they look really sporty. It got to that time where you lost that, what we call now, that retro style. This looks like a classic motorcycle. But when I was in the market for new leader bikes, they didn't look like classic motorcycles anymore. A few did, but they, those ones really didn't interest me that much. And so I rode and 
bought and rode other bikes. Then I got married and had children and as happens with many people I wasn't encouraged to ride motorbikes during that time so I stopped for many years. Then when I came back to biking again, the same problem. Unless I bought an old second hand bike, all the new ones didn't look or feel the way I thought a motorcycle should. Okay, we're going to have to stop up here in a minute. So much to my delight and then a number of years ago, I guess Triumph came back with the Bonneville. Well, they never completely went away, but uh, the Bonnevilles became very popular again and the current iteration of Triumph and then the retro market really started to take off and Kawasaki had that W800 and there's a few others around there that I thought were really nice bikes but when this one came out I just knew straight away I have to have one and I gotta say I've waited nearly two years to do this review I wanted to really get to know the bike before I did a review talking about it here we go, this stop up here. I gotta say, it is just incredible and I couldn't be happier. And it looks and feels just the way I think a motorcycle should. So you draw a picture of a motorbike and in most cases people will draw that classic looking motorbike and this certainly looks like that. Okay, so while we stopped here, we're coming up to some hairpins and things like that. Uh, the idling, it sits on around, this one idling is around a thousand RPMs. When you first turn it on, it's more up around 2000, takes a while to warm up, it gradually comes down to one and a half and then down to around one. Some people say the motors run a little bit hot. I haven't had any problems, but then I don't do a lot of city riding. Uh, I tend to be out in the country mostly. That's where I prefer to ride. Don't really enjoy riding in the city. And so I tend to not be pulled up like this very much. So I don't have um, any overheating and I don't feel too much on my legs or anything like that. It's no hotter than any of my other bikes. Some people spoke about it being a little bit jerky with the fueling to me it's like a motorcycle from that era should feel like I don't like a really smooth throttle I like it to have a little bit of bite and kick to it and this just has the right amount so it's a 40k speed limit here because of the road work this is uh, from damage from a year of torrential rain in Australia this side's not too bad, but on the other side when we go up over the hill there's only one lane open because on the other side it's still falling away and I think they might be still working out how they're going to be able to fix it. Lots of challenges, but I do love this road because the surface is so smooth and on a bike like this it just feels fantastic. So while this has got road work, I'm going to take you on another mountain road shortly that doesn't have, or did up until recently, doesn't, uh, and so you'll get a, and I'll stop talking during that part of the video, just so you can hear the engine. Yes, Kawasaki really got it right. I like that feeling. So I guess what I tend to do on this bike is I tend to cruise on it. I tend to treat it a little bit like a cruiser. Now I have a cruiser, I have a modern cruiser, I have a CMX 1100 Rebel. And the two, I cruise on both of them but in a different way. The one thing that's similar with both machines is I love changing up and down through the gears lots. Because I love the feel and I love the sound and when I'm out riding them I just want to ride to enjoy and to experience and take all that in 
just become one with the machine and feel that. Another bike rider here. Got to love motorcycling. We're all brothers and sisters, I guess, from that point of view. Yeah, it's such a great recreation. And anyone else on a bike not only acknowledges you, but wants to interact and relate and help you out if you get into trouble. And it's so good saying, seeing so many women getting into it now, more so than ever. The number of women riding motorbikes is incredible. And then you have these very, very popular YouTube channels like Hitchy Boots and things like that, that are just doing wonders and uh, showing other women and a lot of men what you can do on a motorbike and how it can take you anywhere you can see the world you can be as adventurous or not adventurous as you want it's just such a fantastic pastime recreation in my case i'm semi-retired now aiming to fully retire it's become my life again like it was when i was growing up whoops from the age of about eight i just rode motor bikes every day farm bikes everything and that passion never went away even though there was a long period where I didn't ride and it was the same with horses I grew up riding horses too and now I love getting out on a horse I don't do it very much I've got to the point now where I'm out riding a bike every day again and that's so exciting it makes me feel so good So getting back to what Kawasaki did with this machine. Kawasaki's are known for their smooth, beautiful sounding four cylinder engines and this is no exception. So what they did, and this has been well documented so I won't go into great detail, but they took their popular Naked, the Z900, which has around 125 horsepower and they use that bike as a base and they changed the frame. Went to great lengths to develop fuel tank and seat and things like that that looked like the original. They tuned the engine down. So um, the Z900 RS, this has around 110, 111 horsepower. but the torque is much further down, much lower down than on the Z900. And that what's, that's what makes it so nice to cruise around on. It's not a bike that I want to take out on a highway and just ride all day in one gear. That's not the enjoyment this machine gives. The enjoyment this machine gives is this beautiful, comfortable ride on a machine that you can hear the intake really strongly and when we go up this mountain road shortly, this next mountain road, you'll hear that. You'll hear the intake and the exhaust and the combination of those two sounds and the feel of the way the gearing's done, the way the torque is delivered. You just become one with the bike and you just have this most amazing experience. So yes, I did cruise on it, but I cruise in a different way. There's the, the two similar things with the uh, Rebel 1100 is I love going up and down the gears, hearing the sound of the gears and feeling the, um, the torque and hearing that magnificent sound. But this bike, I change the gears in a different way and it's a different feeling doesn't feel the same it's a different feeling it I love cornering on this bike but like the CMX 1100 is a more flickable bike which would surprise some people a lot of people I'm sure this one I just like rolling it into and out of corners it's less a flick experience and more uh, riding and a smooth it's like how would I describe it it's like you get into this flow and you just want it to be, because the engine's so smooth, you just want to enjoy that flow and rhythm 
as much as possible. And that's what gives me the biggest smile and gives me this such a nice, positive, amazing feeling. And I'll never get tired of it. Never ever get tired of the way this bike sounds and feels. So we'll go through and talk about the various aspects of the bike. So I won't give you exact specs like how big the discs are and things like that. But I'll just tell you, to me, how everything feels and performs. So we'll start at the top. The first thing you notice when you mount this steed, this motorcycle steed, is the clocks. So the speedo and the taco. And that really takes me back too to the way motorbikes were, the way road bikes were when I was growing up. Those classic looking clocks. And they're very authentic to the originals. You'll notice that there's the LCD section between which gives you your gear indication, your fuel, your temperature, ambient and radiator. It gives you your trip meters and all those important things but leaves those clocks just clean and classic and then the shape of them the bullet shape some people call it i'm not sure technically how you describe it but looking from side on and front on they just look really cool and really authentic and really retro handlebars again very traditional very much like i remember on my early road bikes exactly the same position with my arms coming down to them. They feel and look exactly the same. Even the, uh, even the layout on the, on the handlebars. It's very, very similar. It's got a couple of modern little things, but um, they've kept everything authentic. Look at this. So even when you slow down to, say, around 50, it just burbles along. So smooth, so relaxed. Oh, there must be a show on here. Getting ready or cleaning up from one. What a beautiful town this is. Anyone in Australia will know exactly what this town is just by the look of it and the mountains around it when you're riding into it. For those who are not in Australia and haven't been to Australia, this is Kangaroo Valley. We should be pretty safe from running into any kangaroos. It's the middle of the day. You also always see motorbikes here. Yes, the brake fluid reservoir looks just like the ones on the bikes that uh, I rode in the 80s. The road bikes, yes. Switch gear looks a little more modern than the bikes I used to ride. But very practical, very well laid out, very easy to use. Not too big, not too small, just right. I like that. So the one thing that makes you realise it's a modern machine is your mode button and your selector there. That selector helps you go through the dash, but also your uh, traction control, which has two levels and off. Now the fuel tank. What a classic teardrop looking tank. How authentic is that? Wider and it looks bigger than the originals. Uh, it looks much slimmer and uh, lighter the originals and the whole bike is a much fatter bigger wider heavier machine that's the way bikes have gone but it's not that much higher i don't think the tires are obviously much wider they've retained that teardrop design and style and it's part of what makes it look so classic that and the seats 
What is different is you've got a radiator down the front. They were all air-cooled back in the day, so it's different from that point of view. And the exhaust is different, obviously it's a 4 into one now. It still sounds very similar to, and I love that, it sounds very similar and very authentic to the originals which had your pipes coming out each side. Just checking out that view there. Yeah, the fact that it is a 4 into one the chrome does look beautiful, but it doesn't weigh as much as what it would have if they'd done it like the original. So it's helped keep the weight down. Like on a lot of these rides, I get distracted. I hear the sound of the machine when I change gears, and then I start stop talking and start listening because I'm experiencing the ride and I forget that I'm doing a review. And then have to get my train of thought back to it. This is the ideal kind of road for this machine. Tight bends, sweeping bends, it's the sort of road where you can get that flow going and you just enjoy getting into that rhythm and flowing along. In a little while we'll get into some much more technical stuff and that's where I'm going to stop talking and let you hear the sound of the bike. Because this is a naked uh, when we get up to higher speeds it's hard to hear the machine because you've got all the wind noise and everything else then. So I am trying to concentrate just on flow. And these are the kinds of roads I grew up on. I grew up on a lot of dirt roads but then when I got off the dirt roads were sort of in countryside like this and so I feel right at home on a bike that feels and looks the same as those I used to ride and that handles similarly much better the brakes are much better the suspension's much better it's quite taut the suspension on this but it's not uncomfortable it's just right, they've set it up beautifully. So it feels a little sporty in terms of the suspension that it's not too soft. You hit a bump, you do feel it a little bit, but it's not, not in a bad way, not uncomfortable, just the right amount. So we've got Kawasaki branded brakes. It's a four part up the front on a dual disc, and then we've got the uh, single disc at the back. Kawasaki brand, the front brakes are fantastic, they're just right, they're just, for a machine like this, which I'm, you're cruising on, look at that scenery, isn't it incredible? Kangaroo Valley has to be one of the most beautiful parts of Australia. I'll just tilt my head up so you can see that. Yes, the front brakes have plenty of stopping power. The rear I wish had a little bit more for trail braking. But I think I'll put some new brake pads on that and I should be able to improve those. That's probably my only criticism of the bike is the back brake isn't quite as good as I'd like it to be. Not that I use brakes much. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking just so you can hear the bike go up this mountain and enjoy the scenery because it is one of the best roads I ride on. I love this road. 60k speed limit so I'm staying in a fairly low gear just trundling along if the car behind, behind me wants to go past he's more than welcome to if he wants to go over the speed limit but I just want to experience this ride get into the flow of the mountain and the road and just enjoy this I hope you do too
look at that landslip over there. Wow. Oh, look at the track. Ooh.